The Decisive Word Regarding the Ascension of Jesus Part 1 While he was still alive and his descent for the purpose of killing the Antichrist, Dajjal. Author's Preface All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, the, favorable, ending is for the fearful, there is no enmity except upon the transgressors. I bear witness that there is no deity, truly worthy of being worshipped, except Allah alone. Without any partners this, is a testimony with which I, hope to, be liberated from the punishment on the day of judgment a day in which neither money nor children will be of any benefit. A friend will not be useful to a friend whatsoever, and they will not be aided. On that day, the oppressor will bite down on his hands and say, only if I had taken the path of the messenger. Woe to me! Had I not taken so and so as a companion, indeed he has diverted me from the remembrance, of Allah after it came to me. And the devil is a betrayer of mankind. I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's slave, servant and messenger who conveyed the clearest message and clarified the revelation to the people so that they may contemplate. He left his nation upon a clear way, its night is like its day, no one deviates from it except that he is destroyed. May Allah bestow prayer, peace, and blessings upon him, his family, and his rightly guided companions. To proceed. Since the beginning of this century, 20th, or before it, there was a group calling to intellectual liberty. The group led a movement of, what they perceived to be, religious rectification and reviving correct religious understanding amid the Muslims. On the contrary, while doing so, this group resorted to denying a great deal of matters of the unseen, mentioned in irrefutable and authentic texts from the Quran and Sunnah. This is a matter that necessitates the affirmation, of those undeniable texts, and that which is indisputably known in the religion. There was no source to support these people regarding this denial, except intellectual unruliness and deception. This philosophical mutazali trend, which is based upon empowering the intellect over the information from the Quran and Sunnah, became quite popular and influential to them. Their trouble spread until a number of misled people, who were enthralled by eloquence, brilliant surnames and nicknames, were influenced. In light of this, fact, I resolved the clarification was mandatory a clarification, with which I will be removed from the sin of concealment, for I am restoring justice. I am clarifying to those who have digressed from the methodology of guidance, that these affairs over which they dispute, are in fact conclusively and irrefutably established with evidences that do not allow argumentation or contention. Whoever tries to reject the evidences or permits their defamation is at great risk in his religion. At the same time, this wrongdoer has opened the door to criticism of issues without substantial support from the religion. With this, in mind, we are now in front of a limitless tidal wave of denial. Consequently, all matters of Akida are, now, subject to the manipulation of desires and conflicting opinions. I will try, Allah willing, in this small treatise to convey the evidences from the Quran, the Sunnah, and the narrations of the righteous predecessors that pertain to the ascension of Isa, Jesus. Peace and blessings be upon him, while alive and his descent to earth close to the establishment of the hour, and his killing of the Antichrist. This shall be enlightenment for our brothers and an excuse, for me, to Allah, the Almighty and Sublime. This was so that those who died from amongst them would die after evidence was established by the believers' victory against them, despite their lack of numbers and preparation. And so that those who lived would live with clear evidences that Allah made obvious to them, and no one would have any evidence against Allah that they could use as an argument. al Anfa, 8, 42. I ask Allah, the Almighty, to benefit the party of truth and Iman with this treatise and, I ask him to, disgrace the people of deviation and disbelief with it. Verily he is all noble and all giving. Verses regarding the raising of Jesus the first verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah also planned against them by saying to Jesus, O oh Jesus, I will take you away alive, raise your body and soul to me, rid you of the filth of those who disbelieved you and distance you from them. I will make those who follow you part of the true religion, which includes acceptance of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And they will have greater proof and might over those who disbelieve you until the day of resurrection. Then to me alone will be your return on the day of resurrection and I will pass through judgment between you regarding your differences. Ali Imran 3, 55. al hafi bin Kathir said during the explanation of this verse, which is the summary of, his statement, explainers, of the Quran, disagree regarding the statement of Allah. I will take you away alive, raise your body and soul to me. 
Qatar Ard and others said that this is from, a linguistic structure called, post-positive and pre-positive, which means, verily, I am raising you to me and taking you, which means, after that. Translators note, in the Arabic language, usually the subject comes before the predicate. However, in this instance, it is opposite. Ali bin Abi Talha said, on the authority of Ibn Abbas, I will take you, means I will cause you to die. Muhammad bin Aishaq reported on the authority of someone without accusations, who reported on, Wahhab bin Munabi who said. Allah took his, Jesus, life for three hours from the beginning of the day in which he raised him up himself. Ibn Aishaq said. Christians claim that Allah took Jesus' life for seven hours then brought him back to life. Aishaq bin Bish reported on the authority of Idris, on Wahhab, Allah gave him, Jesus, death for three days, then resurrected him, then raised him up. Matawarak said, I will take you means, to remove, from the worldly life and does not mean, actual, death. Ibn Jariya made a similar, statement, to take Jesus is to raise him up. Most scholars said that take here, in this verse, means sleep. Allah says. Allah is the one who temporarily takes away your souls at night as you sleep. Allah Naam, 6, 60. And Allah says. Allah is the one who takes away the souls when their term ends. He also takes the souls whose term has not ended when they sleep. He then withholds those for whom he has decreed death and releases those for whom he has not decreed death until a time that is fixed in his knowledge, may he be glorified. In this taking away, release, giving of death and life there are indications for a people who reflect on the fact that the one who does this is able to resurrect people after their death for reckoning and recompense. As Zumar, 39, 42. The Messenger of Allah, would say when he would rise from sleep, all praises for Allah, who has given us life after he caused us to die. Al-Bukhari, 6312, 6314, Muslim, 2711. Ibn Abi Hatim said, My father told us, Almud bin Abd Urman told us, Abdullah bin Abi Jafar told us on the authority of his father, Arabi bin Anas told us, on the authority of Al Hassan who said, Regarding the statement of Allah, I will take you. Ali Imran, 3, 55. This means a demise, taking, of sleep. Allah raised Jesus while he was asleep. Al Hassan said, The Messenger of Allah, said to the Jews, Verily Jesus did not die, and verily he will return to you before the day of judgment. Ibn Kathir mentioned it in his Tafsir, volume 1 367. Allah's saying, and clear you, of the falsehood, of those who disbelieve. This, clear you, means by raising you, Jesus, to the heavens. Similarly, Ibn Kathir presented to us a host of explanations for the verse. Finally, he chose the opinion of the majority, which defines take with sleep. Ibn Kathir supported this opinion with two verses from the Quran, both of which mention take with the meaning of sleep. Likewise, he also used the hadith that names sleep as death and consciousness as revival. He supported this opinion with the statement of Allah in Surah on Nisa. There is not one of the people of the scripture except that they will believe in Jesus, peace be upon him, before his death. One interpretation is that his death refers to that of Jesus after his return to earth. Or it can mean the death of every individual from among the people of the scripture, after he descends towards the end of time. On the day of judgment, Jesus, peace be upon him, will bear witness against their actions, whether agreeing with the sacred law or not. An Niza, 4, 159. Ibn Kathir said regarding the pronoun in Allah's statement. Before his death. The pronoun, refers to Jesus, which means that everyone from the people of the book will believe in Jesus and that will be at the time he descends to the earth before the day of judgment. This, point, will be clarified later. At that time, all the people of the book will believe in him, because Jesus will discontinue the jizya, taxation that is taken from non-Muslims, and only Islam will be accepted. Then Ibn Kathir reported on the authority of Ibn Abi Hatim as it relates to this opinion of Al-Hassan. Al-Hassan reported a hadith that is Mafu. We agree with Ibn Kathir that this opinion must be taken in order to understand the verse, because it coincides with the command of the Quran when referring ambiguous verses to clear ones. So they, the ambiguous verses, can be understood. Here, the phrase take is ambiguous because it could mean take as in death, take as in sleep or take meaning to seize and to collect. 
but, the wording raised to Allah is clearly understood and explicit in its meaning. Interpreting this, wording, with raise the soul or with raise the status is apostasy in regards to the verse and a distortion of, Allah's, speech from its, proper, context. Since this, point, is clear, what is suitable regarding raise to Allah from the meanings of take is the take which has the meaning of sleep not death. Therefore, Jesus raising to Allah does not mean death. This goes, along with the fact that raise means to purify Jesus from the Jews and rescue him from their plot when they wanted to kill him with the estimated meaning that take is death. The glad tidings of purification and rescue will not be actualized based on take meaning death. Instead, the meaning would be, Allah helped the Jews in carrying out their objective, getting rid of Jesus by way of, his, death or, his, murder. How, then, would the, following, saying of Allah be understood, if it were explained with take meaning death? The disbelievers from the Israelites plotted to kill Jesus, peace be upon him, so Allah planned to leave them in their misguidance. And he made another person resemble Jesus, peace be upon him, on the occasion when they actually tried to murder him. Allah is the best plotter, because there can be nothing more severe than his plot against his enemies. Ali Imran, 3, 54. By explaining take to mean death, would it be suitable that Allah counters the plot of the Jews by killing Jesus before they would kill him? Or, is it more suitable, that he would raise him alive then send him down so he seeks revenge from those people who plotted against him and harmed him? Thus, he will fight them upon Islam whosoever refuses, he will irrigate the earth with their blood, and whosoever submits, will be saved by that individual's Islam? None of the narrations that were brought by Ibn Kathir in which take is defined by death are authentic or worthy of adherence. The narration of Ali bin Abi Tala is Munkatiya. For Ibn Abi Tala did not hear from Ibn Abbas. With that in mind, the narration of Ali bin Abi Tala does not have the strength to oppose the plentiful narrations on Ibn Abbas that depict Jesus being raised up alive. And that he will descend from the heavens. Under the premise that these narrations are authentic, Ibn Abbas must have meant by, narrating, them that Allah would cause Jesu to die during the end of time after Jesus descends to earth. Just as Qatar Ada mentioned. It is known that the letter here, in the verse, is being used as a conjunction. It does not mean order nor does it signify something being the end result or that he killed him then brought him back to life similar to what was reported by Ibn Ishwak. On the authority of Wahhab bin al-Munabi. As for the narration of Ibn Ishwak, on the authority of Wahhab bin al-Munabi it is so that the other narrations from him will be in agreement. As for the narration of Ibn Ishwak on Wahhab, this also does not amount to anything. Ibn Ishaq specializes in biographies, he is not a specialist of hadith. And Wahhab bin Munabi used to be a Jew and then embraced Islam. It is known that those, people, who accepted Islam from the people of the book, entered a lot of Israel's aliyat, narrations, which they had with them regarded as the explanation of the Quran. The fact that Wahhab said, verily, Jesus died for three hours, during those three hours he was raised to the heavens. Then his after that, life was returned to him. Indeed, it was reported that Ibn Hazm, in connection with the death and the raising of Jesus, said regarding the, following, verse. I will take you and raise you to myself. Ali Imran, 3, 55. He did not disagree with the raising of Jesus. Rather, he only opposed, Jesus, living due to his Ibn Hazm's, stern adherence to the apparent meanings of the, previous, phrase. Which is the affair of Athtahiriya, the methodology of Ibn Hazm. Therefore, only three, authentic, explanations remain regarding this verse. 1. The majority's opinion, Ibn Kathir chose this opinion and narrated it on the authority of Al-Hassan. This opinion defines take, a Torafi, as sleep. 2. Qatar Ada's opinion, this, opinion, means that there is a prepositive and postpositive, function, in speech. The estimated meaning is, indeed, I will raise you to me and take you, meaning after the descent. 3. Ibn Jariyah's opinion, this, opinion, defines a Torafi as raising and means I will seize you from the earth and take you with your body and soul. This explanation is attributed to Ibn Zayd and is the narration Ibn Kathir mentioned on the authority of Maitre al-Warak. These three opinions all agree Jesus was raised alive although some are more authentic and more acceptable than others. The first opinion is the most authentic. It is the opinion of the majority, in succession, the opinion of Qatar Ada and then Ibn Jariyah. And Allah knows best. Second verse. 
I cursed them because they proudly, but falsely, said, We killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. They did not kill him as they claimed, nor did they crucify him, but they killed and crucified a man whom Allah made to resemble Jesus, so they thought the person who was killed was Jesus. Those Jews who claimed to have killed him and those Christians who surrendered him over to them are in doubt and confusion regarding their matter. They have no knowledge, but make guesses that are of no worth against the truth. Truly, they did not kill Jesus nor crucify him. Anniser, 4, 157. Instead, Allah saved Jesus from their plot and raised him in body and spirit to himself. Allah is mighty in his dominion and nothing can overpower him. He is wise in his planning, decisions and laws. Anniser, 4, 158. Allah makes the Jews liars regarding their claim of Jesus' murder and crucifixion. Likewise, Allah informs he is the most truthful informer that an individual resembling Jesus was presented to the Jews. In other words, Jesus' likeness was placed on a man from, either, his followers or his enemies. At that point, the Jews took that man, killed him, and crucified him assuming he was Jesus. Allah then tells of the Jews' uncertainty and confusion and they were not sure if that man was in fact Jesus. Allah informs that, the Jews only assumed, all of, this land that, assumption, was, far from any certainty. Allah then counters their claim of Jesus' murder and crucifixion by mentioning that he raised Jesus to himself. Finally, Allah ends the verse with two of his noble names, Al-Aziz, all-powerful, and Al-Hakim, all-wise, in order to exhibit dominance over his enemies by destroying their plot. 2. Demonstrate, wisdom behind his plan to purify and rescue Jesus by raising him to the heavens. The verse is explicit in the fact that Allah raised Jesus alive because Allah mentions and affirms raising Jesus in the same place he, too, negates, Jesus, murder and crucifixion. If Jesus died on earth and was buried, and if raising means raising Jesus' soul or status, as deniers purport, Mentioning the raising, of Jesus, would not be appropriate in a context that negates the murder and crucifixion. That is because the, only, suitable, way, to negate Jesus from being killed or crucified is to raise him alive not raising him dead. Otherwise, Allah would have said, and they killed him not, nor did they crucify him. Rather, Allah gave him death. And how did delusional individuals misconstrue the meaning of? Instead, Allah saved Jesus from their plot and raised him in body and spirit to himself. Anniser, 4, 158. Does it mean raising Jesus so lonely? Allah only mentioned, this, to falsify that which they claim of his death and crucifixion. The notion, of a raised soul does not invalidate killing or crucifixion and, actually, joins the two, in plausibility, instead. Hypothetically speaking, if they had killed Jesus, his soul would have been raised to Allah. Realistically, and contrary to the previously mentioned erroneous thought, Allah's news of raising Jesus does not produce a feeling that Jesus was specified with being raised. The, only, possible, way, Jesus could be specified regarding being raised is that he would be raised alive, body and soul. Because all of the Prophet's souls and all of the believers' souls are raised to Allah after death. In this regard, there is no difference between Jesus and someone else. In that case, Jesus' specification would not be evident. Then, Allah finished the verse with his saying. Allah is mighty in his dominion and nothing can overpower him. He is wise in his planning, decisions and laws. Anniser, 4, 158. The saying, i.e. verse, proves that this raising is a circumstance in which Allah's majesty and wisdom are manifested. This manifestation would not be complete except that this circumstance, i.e. raising, be extraordinary and or inspiring. What spectacle or or would Jesus' death and soul raising be since this is, as we've stated, a general, rule, for all believers? We will now analyze the statements of the righteous predecessors who explained the Quran in this regard. Ibn Abi Hatim said. We were informed by Ahmad bin Sinan, we were informed by Abu Maya, on the authority of al Mosh, on the authority of Al-Minhal bin Amr, on the authority of Sayyid bin Jubair. On the authority of Ibn Abbas who said, at the time that Allah wanted to raise Jesus to the heavens, Jesus came out to his companions and in the house there were twelve men from the disciples. Jesus entered upon them, from a well in the house while water dripped from his head. Then, he said, to them, indeed, from you are those who will disbelieve in me twelve times after believing in me, 
Then he said, Which one of you will my likeness be placed upon? Be killed in my place, and be on my level with me? One of the youngest boys from them stood up. Jesus said to him, Sit down. After that, Jesus repeated the same request to them, and the same boy stood up. Jesus said to him, Sit down. Jesus repeated the same request to them, and the same boy stood up and said, I will. Jesus said, You will be the one. Therefore, the young man was given Jesus' likeness, and Jesus was raised from a small window in the house to the heavens. Ibn Abbas said, Then the demand for Jesus from the Jews came. So the Jews seized the one resembling Jesus, killed him, and then crucified him. Consequently, some of disciples disbelieved in Jesus twelve times after believing in him. After narrating this hadith, Ibn Kathir said, This chain is authentic back to Ibn Abbas. An Nazar I reported on the authority of Abi Qaib, on authority of Abi Mawiyah. Likewise, more than one of the Salaf mentioned the Hadith and mentioned, that Jesus said to the disciples, Which one of you will my likeness be placed upon, be killed in my place, and be my companion in paradise? Ibn Ishaq said, I was informed by a man, who was Christian, then who accepted Islam, when, the statement, from Allah, I will raise you to myself, came to Jesus, he said, O disciples, which of you would love to be my companion in paradise by resembling my person, to these people, and thus be killed instead of me? So just said, I will, O Ru of Allah, Jesus said, then. Sit in my place. Sir just sat down, in Jesus' spot, and Jesus was raised. Soon after, the Jews entered, they took Sergius into custody and crucified him. Hence, Sergius was the person they crucified and also the person whose appearance was made to look like Jesus to the Jews. Ibn Jariya said, on the authority of Mujarid. The Jews crucified a man who was made to look like Jesus, and Allah raised Jesus to the heavens alive. 